computer and this is uh, the USB 485 adapter and in this setup they have one 16 channel controller and two cosmic color ribbon controllers I am sometimes asked uh, that if if you buy a CCR how many channels of your 16 channel controllers will it use um, it, it, it will not use any of them in this setup uh, this 16 channel controller would be used to control 16 standard light strings uh, like you've been always doing and as you add uh, a cosmic color ribbon controller it daisy chains to that controller and each controller is independent of each other this guy controls his lights this controller controls this cosmic color ribbon and this controller controls that cosmic color ribbon um, so uh, and realize that you're not required to have the 16 channel controller in this setup they just use that as an example you could uh, you don't have to have any 16 channel controllers you could just plug this um, a CCR controller right into the 485 adapter and everything works fine. Once you buy uh, your Cosmic Color Ribbon, this is what you'll find in the box. Here's a manual and uh, starting on page 10 of this manual is instructions on how to configure the Cosmic Color Ribbon, but we'll go over that in this tutorial. And right here is the ribbon that contains the uh, LEDs that comprise the uh, 50 pixels on the ribbon. Here is a 12 volt power supply. This end plugs into the wall, a regular 120 volt uh, outlet. This end uh, supplies 12 volts to the um, controller, which is right here. And the controller is small, but inside that little controller are the 150 channels necessary to run the pixels in the Cosmic Color Ribbon. Now, in addition to the Cosmic Color Ribbon controller, you'll need a USB 485 adapter, sometimes called a USB 485-RJ45, uh, but I just call it a USB 485 adapter for short. This is the actual adapter here. Here is the cable that you'll get for free if you buy it from Laterama. The other things you'll need is uh, a long, you'll eventually want a long Cat5 cable to go out to your stuff, and you'll want some if you have more than one um, CCR controller, you'll want some short Cat5 cables because like in my case, I've got 12 of them and they're all right next to each other. So I bought a bunch of uh, two foot Cat5 cables uh, on eBay. That was the cheapest place I found them. And if I had to do it over again, I'd probably buy one foot cables. Uh, they would be long enough because my controllers are also close to each other. Uh, the and I might note that you know Cat5 cable is the same is what you use to connect your uh, computer to the internet. So when you see a Cat5 cable, it will look familiar to you. Um, so once you have all those things, this shows them all connected. Here's the ribbon; it's plugged into the contr controller, and here's the power supply; it's plugged into the controller, and the other end of the power supply is plugs into the wall. Here's a two foot Cat5 cable. One end's plugged into the controller, the other end is plugged into the USB 485 adapter. And then the cable from the USB 485 adapter plugs into a USB port on your computer. It doesn't matter, it normally doesn't matter which port, just find an, an open uh, USB port and plug it in. And this is uh, what you'll do when you configure your controller. You just want to uh, plug in one controller at a time. And I might note that, oh, going back to here, uh, I currently have a controller plugged into my computer, just as I have pictured here. And so the next thing you'll want to do uh, is launch the Laterama hardware utility. Now, he came up with COM5, but the first time you plug this in, it uh, may not find anything, and you'll want to click on this Auto Configure button. And this tells you uh, plug in one uh, controller, which I've already done. You say OK, 
it says Laterama device found on COM5. And so um, that is the COM port that is assigned to the USB port that I have my controller plugged into. So once you see a COM port there, then you're ready to go over to this section and uh, click on refresh. But I might notice note that before doing that, this says max unit ID. I've already set mine down to one zero. Uh, initially, that'll probably be a higher number. It, you want to set this down to a low number uh, th that covers uh, all th that is higher than the number of controllers you have. Um, but you want it low or else when you click on refresh it takes a long time to do it. But anyway, we're going to click on refresh and you'll see it, it takes, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds here and if this number were set higher it would take longer. Um, that's uh, all I was trying to say. So here we are, we're almost there. Bling. Okay, it says it found, if we click down on this combo box, you see it found one uh, controller and this 01 means that's the unit ID of the controller and this CR150D is the name of the Cosmic Color Ribbon controller and version 1.05 is the version of the uh, firmware that's in the controller. But the only thing you care about is that uh, it's a Cosmic Color Ribbon controller and it's unit ID 1 which is normally the way they're shipped. Uh, now you'll probably want to change the unit ID uh, if you already you probably already have some 16 ca channel controllers and let's say you had two 16 channel controllers and one of them was a unit ID 1 the other one's unit ID 2 so it would make sense to assign this um, to unit ID 3 and so I've told it the old unit ID is 1 and the new unit ID is 3 I click on change unit ID and it says unit ID has been set to 3. It shows a 3 up here but if we want to see all the information we can click on refresh again and it'll come back and show a 0 3 up here with that CR150D blah 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 and there you see it. Um, and so we have just set the unit ID on this controller. In addition to setting the unit ID, you want to click on the configure button. And here on, on this screen that, uh, that says general configuration, you'll see a button that says CCR-CCB config. So we'll click on that. And um, it's very important that all these values be set right. Um, it, it should be shipped, uh, most of them are shipped with the proper defaults, but some of them uh, uh, are not. And so check to make sure that for unit ID mode that it says normal. You want normal. If you set legacy mode, uh, the, the Superstar software will not uh, work. That's not what it expects and everything will look garbled. So. For unit ID mode, you want normal. For channel mode, you want triples. For standalone speed, the default is eight. Um, just eight is fine. It really doesn't matter to the C to Superstar software how you have that set. For ribbon string parameters, you want 50 pixels. For number of strings per ribbon, put one. Uh, or it says number of strings slash ribbons. Uh, if you say, for instance, bought four CCRs, you might be tempted to select four here, but do not. This will always be one. What this is talking about is how many ribbons are connected to a controller, which uh, will always be one. And so the next is DMX mode. You want both macro and RGB channels. Unit ID mode normal, channel mode triples, standalone speed 8, resolution 50, strips 1, DMX mode both macro and RGB channels. 
we've confirmed that all these settings are what we want and um, we want to click on update unit right here and it says CCR has received the option settings so we're all done configuring that uh, controller if you have another controller um, what uh, personally what well, what you would do is you would uh, unplug the controller you just configured, plug in a different controller uh, to your uh, USB 485 adapter, and, and then uh, click on refresh, the refresh button again, and, and then you'd go through the same steps and configure that uh, CCR controller and that covers everything that I want to cover in this tutorial um.